Happy Friday and welcome to This Week in Discovery News, where we recap the top stories of the last seven days, plus your social media comments. I'm Trace, and this week we're going to talk about sharks' fins, playing video games on Mars, and whether Bruce Willis could have really saved the planet by blowing an asteroid in half. Spoiler alert, not really, no. Clever video game controls curiosity on Mars. If you are at all connected with the news any time in the last couple of weeks, you know that we landed on Mars. This is awesome, and we even talked about it in last week's video, which you can see by clicking here. Now, once we're on Mars, what do we do? How do we drive that rover around? NASA has a really cool way of doing so, but it's on Mars for Bobak's sake, so it's a little complicated. Get ready to get jealous. Equipped with 3D glasses, NASA engineers are able to control everything that the rover does on Mars. Think of it as the ultimate video game. Not unlike Mario Kart here on Earth, driving the rover can get a little complicated. Not that they're throwing shells and mushrooms and stuff, but there's a 15 to 20 minute delay between what we do here on Earth and what happens on Mars. So if they're not careful, they might inadvertently drive the rover off a cliff. Dude, I've been poning noobs on Mars all morning, dude. This <laughs> has really great. But, you know, there's like wicked lag, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, 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 did I, oh. I think I'm gonna go to lunch, you guy. Ideally, the Mars rover team sets up everything far in advance. They plan out a route that they want to explore, including rocks and minerals, and then they set the rover on that path. My favorite part of this is those 3D glasses I mentioned earlier. They can put those on and using the rover's 3D cameras, see distance and scale as if they were standing on Mars and then make a decision. That is freaking cool. Hike on over to discoverynews.com slash drive the rover to learn more. And now from non-fictional video games to fictional Armageddon stories, Armageddon asteroid splitting doesn't work. Did you see Armageddon? No? Well, spoiler alert, Bruce Willis blows up an asteroid that's about to hit the Earth, splitting it in half so it misses. Problem is, that don't work. While you might not be surprised that Hollywood wouldn't follow strict scientific principles, <gasps> there are people that are really upset about this. Wikipedia lists 168 errors in the movie that's only 150 minutes long. It seems to us the only scientific fact that they had in the movie was that asteroids exist. To add insult to the celluloid non-scientific monstrosity that is this movie, there have been research papers written about these errors, and they all concur that the producers screwed up. Not that I'd be surprised that Hollywood would take explosions over experts, but there you have it. According to the plot of the film, they didn't spot the asteroid until 18 days before it was supposed to hit Earth. These research papers point out that in space travel, that's like the last second. There is no way that they could implement such a complicated scheme so quickly, and then on top of that, the nuclear bomb that they said they used wasn't nearly powerful enough to blow up that asteroid. These are all important points in that simple research could have made this more scientifically accurate. Of course, a blockbuster film isn't a science documentary, and nor should it be. Fiction is supposed to be entertaining. However, it's more easily believed with a little bit of scientific backing, don't you think? Visit discoverynews.com slash Armageddon Fails to read all the nitpicky science goodness. Finally, with Shark Week due to end fairly soon, there are still people that can ruin Shark Week for everyone. If you have a weak stomach, you may not want to watch this next bit. U.S. shark fin soup, appalling and widespread. Shark fin soup, it's still around. Even though these animals are endangered or at risk, people still eat them. Would you eat Bengal tiger? Would you eat a panda? Why would you eat a shark? The Pew Environment Group gathered 51 samples of shark fin soup from 14 American cities to determine if they contained an endangered species. At least one of the 51 samples contained DNA from an endangered hammerhead shark, while at-risk sharks appeared in some of the other samples, and at least one of the soups had no shark in it at all. If you see shark fin soup and you want to try it, obviously you can do that. But remember that once these species are extinct, they're gone forever. Is that really worth a bowl of soup? On a lighter, more personal note, there are definitely restaurants here in Washington, D.C. where I'd like to do this DNA testing of food. I mean, chicken? I've never seen chicken with fur. Swim over to discoverynews.com slash sharkfinsoup for the full sad story.
Thanks for tuning in to This Week in Discovery News. Make sure that if you want more of our coverage, you like us on Facebook, you follow us on Twitter, and that you check out our Tumblr. You can also subscribe to our Discovery Daily Newsletter and get our headlines in your inbox every morning. Subscription options and links to our social media are at discoverynews.com. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Friday. Because <gasps> he's Bobak. <gasps> he's got stars on his face. <gasps> Why do I look away? Let's do it! How are we gonna pwn noobs? Very limited amount of space. I can't get too excited. That was for you. <gasps> rah, rah, uh, uh. The problem is, I'm gonna get lightheaded.